Okay, so now we're going to begin our discussion of fractions, which is one of the most misunderstood and difficult topics, uh, not just for elementary school students, but for students of all ages. Um, we see many, many students at the college level that have a really hard time doing even the simplest operations with fractions. So it's really important that we get the basics down really well, clear definitions, a clear understanding of the concepts behind fractions, uh, before we lead into arithmetic. So we're going to start just by talking about the very basics of fractions and introducing what a fraction is. Uh, a fraction is just a, can be thought of as just a point on a number line. The number line is one of the most important models that uh, children learn at ver a very early age and a model that they use pretty much throughout their mathematical lives. Um, at, at the beginning, a number line is used to model the whole number, starting with zero and going on to the right. One, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. If we wanted to talk about fractions, then we can talk about taking the interval from zero to one and chopping it into an equal number of pieces. And this is going to be what we're eventually going to refer to as fractional units. So for example, <clears throat> let's say we wanted to locate three sevenths on a number line. What would this even mean? Students at this point have no idea what this number 3 sevenths is, but what we can do is we can give them guidelines for finding this number 3 sevenths, and that's going to shed some light on what a fraction actually is. What we're going to do is simply take the interval from 0 to 1 and split it into 7 equal pieces. And so what this shows us straight away is that the number that we'll eventually learn to, to come to know as the den denominator of a fraction simply records the number of fractional pieces that make a whole unit. In this case, if our denominator is 7, that means 7 pieces make the whole. And the numerator is how many of these pieces we're interested in. In this case, we're interested in 3 of them. So we just count 1, 2, 3 of these pieces. And that's where the fraction 3 sevenths is located on a number line. And notice that this procedure can be used to find any fraction we want on a number line. We could find the fraction, I'm not going to do it on a picture, but if I wanted to locate the fraction 121 nineteenths on a number line, I could do the same thing. I would divide the interval from 0 to 1 into 19 equal pieces. And then I would count 121 of those pieces, and wherever I land, that would be 121 nineteenths. So this process can help me figure out where all of the fractions are located on a number line. So really, we get an indication straight away that fractions simply extend what we already know about whole numbers. And this is a really important point to get across to your students, because often students think that fractions are kind of separate somehow from whole numbers, and different rules apply, where exactly the opposite is true. Fractions extend what we already know about whole numbers. Okay, so we know how to find fractions on a number line. What we want to do now is just talk about why do we even need fractions? Why are they even necessary? And if we can agree that they are necessary, in what situations would we use fractions? Well, whenever we talk about numbers, we always have a unit in mind. Whenever you're measuring something, you have a unit that accompanies an individual number. So for example, you wouldn't say, I am 72 tall, you would say I am 72 inches tall. Or you wouldn't say a textbook weighs 4, you would say a textbook weighs 4 pounds. There's always a unit in mind when we're measuring. So we use fractions when we have a whole unit, or a given unit that we call the whole unit, but we want to measure using a smaller unit called the fractional unit. So for example, suppose you are running around a track. And let's suppose that four laps around a track is equivalent to one mile. Well, in this case, our whole unit would be a mile. That's the unit that we're going to measure. If you're telling people how far you ran, you're going to tell people how far you ran in miles. The mile is going to be whole mile. The whole unit, I should say, is a mile. 
the end of a long day. So the whole unit is a mile. Again, when you tell people how far you ran, you're going to tell them I ran this many miles. But we're going to measure in terms of a smaller unit, which is a lap. So in this case, the fractional unit is a lap. So let's say you ran three laps. If you run three laps, you didn't quite run a mile, but you still want to be able to talk about how far you ran. So this is an, in an instance in which fractions are needed to describe how far you ran, to describe how much of a mile you ran. And as we saw from our previous example of locating fractions on a number line, a fraction is going to be composed of a numerator and a denominator. Those numbers have different roles. Okay? The, new, the denominator simply records the number of fractional units that make a whole unit. In this case, the denominator is four, because four fractional units make a whole unit. Four laps make a mile. So in this case, we ran, so the denominator of our fraction is going to be four, and the numerator is just the frac number of fractional units we're interested in. In this case, we ran three laps, so we ran three fractional units. So the numerator of our fraction is going to be 3. The denominator of our fraction is going to be 4. This is the fraction 3 4. So if you ran 3 laps, you ran 3 fourths of a mile. Again, for students that are seeing this for the first time, the notation is very confusing. Oftentimes, students mistakenly think that a fraction is two numbers. A fraction is one number, the number 3 fourths. Now, a fraction is comprised of a numerator and a denominator that play different roles. Again, in general, the numerator is the number of fractional units that we are interested in. In this case, the number of laps we ran, which was three. And the denominator is the number of fractional units that make a whole unit. In this case, four, because four laps make a mile. Now, this clear understanding of the role of the numerator and the denominator is really going to be beneficial to us when we learn how to order fractions and when we learn how to do fraction arithmetic. And often, when students make mistakes with fraction arithmetic, it's because they don't really clearly understand the roles that the numerator and the denominator play. So these rules need to be made very clear from the outset. OK, so now that we have kind of our bearings, we understand what a fraction is, how to find a fraction on a number line, why we would use fractions, we can start on the road to fraction arithmetic. And before we do that, however, there are some kind of common misconceptions that we do want to clear up about fractions. And ordering fractions is oftentimes a tricky point for students. And what I mean by ordering fractions is simply if we're given two fractions, tell me which one is bigger. Now, at the beginning stages, we are really only going to be able to look at two types of problems. Comparing fractions that have the same denominator and then and different numerators, and comparing fractions that have the same numerator and different denominators. Okay. Now, one of these cases is very easy. If two fractions have the same denominator, it is very easy to order them. So we might add, ask, which is bigger, 2 sevenths or 5 sevenths? Now, Pretty much anyone, you don't have to have a lot of knowledge of what a fraction is to answer this question correctly, because you just look at the numbers and say that 5 is bigger than 2, so 5 sevenths is bigger than 2 sevenths. Now that's not really the reason why 5 sevenths is bigger. So even though this is a pretty simple question and pretty much all students will understand this straight away, we really want them to understand why this is true. So it still can be worth your while to draw models and give an explanation of why this is true. <clears throat> Bar diagrams have been helpful in the past, and they can be helpful here as well. If we want to compare 2 sevenths and 5 sevenths, then we can simply model 2 sevenths on one diagram and 5 sevenths on another diagram, keeping in mind that we need our diagrams to be the same size, because remember, our original diagrams represent the number 1, because 1 represents the whole in this case. 
So we need to be comparing the same things. Now, if we want to represent two sevens, we know how to do that just by our kind of knowledge of what a numerator and denominator, the significance of those things. Seven represents the number of fractional units that make the whole, right? So that means I'm going to split the whole bar into seven pieces. And in five sevens, I have the same denominator. So I have the same number of pieces. Now, notice that the pieces being the same size, this is really the reason why five sevens is bigger than two sevens, right? Because the numerator in a fraction is just the number of fractional units that we're interested in. In two sevens, we're interested in two fractional units, i.e. two pieces. In five sevens, we're interested in five fractional units i.e. five pieces. So again, the real reason why five sevens is larger than two sevens is because they're the, the pieces in these problems are exactly the same size. So if you have five sevens of something and I have two sevens of the same thing, the pieces we have are the same size, but if you have more pieces than me, you're certainly going to have a larger fraction of the whole than I have. And that's what's happening here. So that's why five sevens is larger than two sevens. So again, it's not a difficult question to answer, but to explain why it's true does take some knowledge of the numerator and the denominator. And this type of explanation can be useful because when we move on to our next type of ordering problem, where the numerators are now different, but the or, or sorry, the numerators are the same, but the denominators are different. These problems can be really tricky for students who really aren't thinking about the role of the numerator and the denominator. So now we might say, which is larger? <clears throat> two thirds or two sevenths? Now, it is completely reasonable within the realm of possibilities that a student could make the following analysis. Well, if I want to compare these numbers, I'm going to start with the numerators, but they're the same. So I can't draw any conclusions about which is bigger since the numerators are the same. So now I'm going to look at the denominators. Since 7 is bigger than 3, I'm going to conclude that 2 sevenths is bigger than 2 thirds. Now, that seems on the surface very reasonable, and a student can probably easily convince him or herself that that's the correct analysis of the situation. But really what we need to think about is the role of the numerator and the denominator. And that can be illustrated again through diagrams similar to the ones we just drew. So if we want to compare 2 thirds and 2 sevenths, and incidentally, bars are really good for these types of comparisons because if we can just stack bars one on another. Oftentimes, we're tempted to always draw circles when we describe fractions and when we, talk, when we model fractions, but it's a little harder to, to put a, a, you know, a circle model right on top of one another for comparison purposes. Okay, we want to illustrate 2 thirds and 2 sevenths. Well, 2 thirds, just by our, again, roles of numerator and denominator, denominator, the denominator is 3, which means that we're going to split the bar into 3 equal pieces and shade 2 of them. So this picture is 2 thirds. But with 2 sevenths, as we saw in our previous example, the denominator is 7, which means we're going to split the bar into 7 pieces and shade 2 of them. Now it is very clear that 2 thirds is larger than 2 sevenths from the diagram. And again, we can give a similar explanation based on uh, a real world example. Let's say we both buy a pizza. I cut my pizza into three pieces. You cut yours into seven pieces. But the, our original pieces were exactly the same size, by the way. If I cut mine into three pieces, my pieces are much bigger than yours. And if I eat two pieces and you eat two pieces, but the pieces I ate were way bigger than yours, clearly I ate more than you did. I ate a larger fraction of the pizza than you did. So again, the reason that 2 thirds is bigger than 2 sevenths is because the pieces of 2 thirds are bigger, or the, the pieces of the whole when we represent 2 thirds are larger than the pieces of the whole when we represent 2 sevenths. Right. So again, this can be explained quite easily, but it needs to be explained because it's very easy for students to uh, make a mistake in this case. What we'll do next is we will see how we can again use the roles of numerator and denominator to discuss uh, adding and subtracting fractions where the denominators are the same.